Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Neil Richards. I'm here to talk to you about the Data Visualization Society. Um, I'd like to apologize to any correct spellers and English people. We have to spell it with a Z. Uh, not a Z, but a Z. Um, but other than that, we're a truly global um, organization. We started um, only in February 2019, but who's heard of the Data Visualization Society? Any of you? So that's great. So some of you have heard of it, and we'll find out a little bit more about it. Some of you might not have heard about it. Um, I can I just say, I've never spoken with subtitles before. That's so cool. It's absolutely supercalifragilisticexpialidocious to be here. <laughs> I, I think I broke it. Oh, nice try. Nice try. Thank you. All right. Okay. On to the talk. All right. So, what is the Data Visualization Society? Data Visualization Society is basically made up, it could be made up of data scientists, uh, developers, designers. You might be into data science again, data art. We've got all sorts of people who are into data visualization coming together as one society. And it can also, it's very much tool agnostic. We're here talking, and Tableau. Tableau has a great user group community already. But we also have people with D3, with um, Power B. Yeah, so there's, there's, obviously there's these other tools that we can use as well. But if we start with the early days, where did it start? It all started with a conversation, um, I think only last year, in Tapestry, another great um, conference, which I believe there's going to be repeats of um, in 2020. And it all started with um, Elijah Meeks, who was giving a keynote speech. And part of his keynote, when he was talking about the, the third wave of data visualization, he was really talking about the importance of community. So he got together over a few coffees with um, two other great data viz practitioners, Amy and Molly, and this conversation moved to the pub and they said, well, wouldn't it be great to have a data visualization society? We don't have a professional society like other um, professions do have. And they thought, we didn't have this when we started. When we started, we didn't know the resources to use. We didn't know where to go. We didn't know who to talk to. We had to sort of um, start out in Korea um, ourselves. So that's what got it all started. And it became a logo. So the logo you may have seen, you've seen me handing out badges and stickers and things like this, evolved into this logo of three triangles. And that came from everyone's answers to the surveys. Um, we had questions about data, about visualization, and about society. And those were all those all made up an individual badge for everyone. So for everyone in the society, they all have their own little individual print. And then that became sort of homogenized into a, um, a badge which represents a society, which I'm sort of being Mr. Corporate Man of and showing you there. And it, it's, it's well worth saying that that badge is now actually um, shortlifted for um, uh, 2019 Information is Beautiful Award. So it got... Um, it was inaugurated, it was introduced, and I think they thought there might be 100 or two people sign up in the first week or so. In the first week, there were 2,800 people signed up, and now there's about 9,000 people um, already in the Data Viz Society, so it's really taken off. People are interested, people want to know what they can do. Here was some, uh, one of our first people, John Byrne Murdoch from Financial Times, um, a great, uh, reply, he was excited, with serious kudos to the three people who um, started it up. So, our three founders soon became six with the introduction of Jason Forrest, Yulia Krolik and Amanda McCulloch. These six people really set, to, set out um, how to move the data visualization society forward and they formed a board of directors. And those six then became 11, um, with a young handsome guy in the middle and um, we had four more who came to join us as well. So we have a board of 11 people um, who are all involved in what goes on ahead. But what are the goals of the Data Visualization Society? We've got lots of goals, I won't read them all out, but it's all about fostering an inclusive and international diverse community. 
and in the interest of getting this 30-minute speech into 15, I'll, I'll sort of move all those points forward. But you can see we've split these different goals into fostering community, consolidating resources, and professionalizing data visualization. So all these things are, the, are what we're trying to do as part of the society. And so let's talk a bit more about them. We'll start with fostering community and probably what data viz society is best known for. So a lot of people know it as a big Slack community and that has really taken off. As soon as you join, you're invited to join this Slack community. Um, you can see from the example of whoever screenshot this was, there's all sorts of um, channels that you're, you are eligible to, to join. Um, and we can, it can be from as serious or as um, frivolous as you like. And here's a testimony from a certain Mr. Alberto Cairo. He's found stuff that people have shared in the Data Viz Society, academic documents which have helped him with his teaching. So that's a pretty good um, endorsement. One thing that they're particularly keen to do is to be able to post stuff for critique. Um, so it's not all about um, showcasing your stuff. If you're uh, halfway through a visualization, and you might be interested in getting some feedback from fellow people in society, there's a really good opportunity to do that. Just explain to people what you're trying to get from it, and hopefully you can get some, um, some good responses. Now, connecting channels, there's all sorts of different ways to connect. Um, these are all different um, geographical channels, so you can connect with people in your own city or region or country. And we also have channels for different, uh, different demographics, different professions, all that kind of thing. So we have a, a channel for um, journalists, a channel for LGTBQ, and we have all sorts of different other ways that you might want to join a channel to um, connect with people in, similar to yourself. Also in fostering community, we have challenges. So every so often, about every month or so, I'd say, we've had four or five so far, we have different challenges where we have a, a data set and people might want to create their own data visualization and share with the community. These ones here were all about visualizing the first um, 3,000 or so members. And as you can see, we have a wide range of different people who've entered. Consolidating data visualization resources. This is a simple shot of our website, and as you can see, there's a lot more than just the Slack channel. We have um, events, we have meetups, books, resources, education, a job board, a li list of our challenges on there. So we're trying to bring all the different resources that you might want together in one place. So we have a jobs board. Apparently this existed before, but I didn't know about this and most people didn't. There's a kind of um, Google Sheet that was relatively well known in the industry, but we've consolidated and we've brought that into the Data Visualization Society. So you can link straight to that. If you have a job that you're interested in advertising, um, you can contact us and you can get that on this board as well. And we look at professionalization of data visualization. I'm going to start here with Nightingale. Nightingale, um, of course, named after Florence Nightingale, one of the um, early heroes of data visualization. That's our new publication where we invite people to write about data visualization. If there's an article you want to write, or if there's something that you might want a bit of help on and that we can help you edit, just let us know. We've started Nightingale. And you can see from here, we've already had um, a number of great articles produced. We're actually aiming for about 20 a month, so there really is a, a huge opportunity for people to just submit and write their own articles. And we'll pay you $50 if you do that. Uh, we have a, a financial arrangement with Medium, so you know, we have the budget to, uh, to pay $50 for those that get published. Topics and data viz. We have some great interactive discussions going on. Every so often we'll have a two-week window where we'll have a question. What makes a data visualization elegant? That was posted by Andy Kirk. There's probably no bigger data visualization name than him. And he asked the question, and everybody who's anybody has a chance to answer. Uh, and then Andy, or whoever owns the discussion for that particular couple of weeks, will add their own thoughts, will curate that, will make it into a Nightingale article, and it makes for a really good um, balanced read. And we've also incorporated the data visualization survey. Elijah Meeks himself has run this for a number of years, um, whereby he sends out to as many people as possible 
just finding out how do people use data visualization, particularly how might they be using it in their profession. So we have all sorts of information about um, breakdown of job, about um, demographics, about pay scales, all that kind of thing. And as you can see going past, we've also invited people to visualize these results. So people have found their own story, whether it's about pay, whether it's about diversity, whether it's about breakdown of, uh, of time or background of people. And we are now a non-profit. We're moving towards 501c, which I believe is the sort of US um, non-profit uh, classification. And as a result of being a non-profit, this means our board of directors um, then becomes formally part of that. And these are our 11 directors again. Um, one thing to notice about our 11 directors, which I think is particularly cool, is we've got um, eight women out of 11. Um, this wasn't sort of done by accident or design. This just happens to be the, the makeup of our, um, uh, of our board. So we've got a, a really nice diverse board. We would love to have more members from outside of US and North America. Um, I like to be the, the, uh, the lone English European guy who's sort of flying the flag. Uh, but we also have two uh, members down at the bottom, uh, Kuhu and Sarah, who are both um, brand new at data visualization. We want at least two of our board members to represent early starters, because a lot of what we want to do is to be able to encourage early starters into data visualization. We don't want it just to all be run by people who've been doing the job for a while. And to make it up to 12, we have an official director of cuteness. I see he's been promoted to director of joy. That's Caspian. He's, uh, he's raised the numbers up to 8-4 a little bit there, but we're still outnumbered. But we have an advisory council. Um, some pretty famous names on there, I'm sure you agree. Some of them heroes to me. Georgia Lupi, Mona Chalabi, Alberto Cairo. We have seven people here who um, are advisory council. So they help us out. They help with judging our competitions. They help with um, input into the board as well. So what's next? These are just some of our goals going forward. We're going to set up Discourse, which is a, a, an internal um, communication platform. It's more permanent than Slack. Slack is so busy. I know some people find it overwhelming, and we get so many messages that go on and then eventually peter out. So anything important, we're going to be able to save all these resources onto Discourse and make that available to all of the uh, society as well. We're planning a conference. Um, Probably next year, but possibly early 2021. We're really interested in getting a conference. We're at the brainstorming um, stages at the moment. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be as big as TC, but I think with 9,000 members, we're hoping to get some, uh, something pretty exciting going on. And as I mentioned before, we really want to engage early career members. We're all there to help our two um, uh, young early starter board members there, and we're going to try and um, get all different platforms for early careers to get more engaged. We're going to start a mentorship program. We're still sort of thinking how that's going to work out, but anyone who might be interested in being a mentor or a mentee, we'd love to find out some more, and we're going to try and get that started in the new year as well. And with our education committee, we want to develop um, data visualization curriculum. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of work going into that. You know, what kind of curriculum can we set up that's going to be available to everyone to learn about data visualization best practices? So how can you get involved? Uh, first of all, you join. Go to the website and join. Click on Become a Member. Um, you get invited into the Slack channels, and you're then a fully-fledged member. We're also looking for people to join committees. We've just gone through a round of um, committee selection, and so we have a number of people. But all these committees go up into the different directors. So you might be interested in um, being part of the Education uh, Committee or the Partnerships Committee. We've got, we're always looking for people who can help out the directors move things forward. And as I say, we've, we've just been through a round of selection, but you can always go onto the um, Get Involved Slack channel once you're a member, find out what's available there, and just sort of state your interest in helping out, and people will be um, most grateful. I mentioned it before, you can write for Nightingale. We have a, um, an editor. He's the only paid person in um, the society, so all of us directors are doing it for free, but we've, um, we are able to pay for a salary for um, an experienced editor. And he's a great guy, Isaac. He will help to um, uh, it will help you with any writing that you want and with any editing of articles. Uh, and it means that we can just get a really nice supply of um, 
Nightingale articles, and anyone, who, but anyone is invited to do that. You can become a partner, so we've um, had partnership arrangements to do with um, challenges, conferences, things like that. Um, we've, we've partnered with VizFest, for example, we were a partner with Encode, and uh, we've had partnerships um, in things like uh, Mapbox to help us in one of our um, challenges. So if there's any way you think um, you or your organisation could become a partner, as always, let us know. And finally, pick up swag. Um, this place looks a bit of a mess. That's because I've put a whole load of swag around. There's stickers. There's, I think all the badges have gone, but there's lots of information about what we do. I have some more stickers at the front if anyone wants them. And that's kind of it. We've just got a few more, um, a, a bit of the early reaction to um, data visualization society here. So people who are showing off their swag, who are excited about the way it all started. Um, and when, when Nadia Bremer has one of your stickers, I think probably everyone should want one. Uh, that's certainly the way I feel about it. Individual badges, everyone has their own individual badge. People, RJ Andrews, excited about the writing. And that's probably one of my favorite tweets of all time. Alberto Cairo retweeting one of my designs to say how good Data Visualization Society is. So on that note, um, Thank you very much. I've, I've rushed through that. I feel like there's loads I could talk about, but there's, you know, there's only 15 minutes of, um, of excitement. But if you have any questions, then do get in touch or do um, talk to me now or later in the conference. Um, or, or just sign up. It's free, and you'll find out um, all about the Slack channels and uh, take it from there. Thank you very much.